What is good? We're back, and we got our guy Big Co. What's up, dog? What's happening, man? Oh, not much. Just, just here. Where, not only do you get Big Co, you got glasses, Big Co. So it's these are my screen blockers. Your blue blockers. These are not my readers. I did. I'm about to turn forty. I had to get my first eye exam ever the other day. Crush the eye. <laughs> she was like, read this line. And I was like, I'm just going to go straight to the bottom line. Okay. Bang, 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 bang. I didn't miss a letter. She said, can you see through that wall? Right eye, left eye. <laughs> I, I'm good. I just a little up close and a little magnification. Mm. You know, just block little, the blues too. Readers. Block the blues. Blue blocker. Got it. Boom. Got to. Got to get that good sleep. Can't be getting the blues. Yeah. All right. So been we about got four months. Hadn't been here in about four months. Yeah. Got a, a lot got happened. A three month old baby at home. Mm-hmm. Baby number two is just, you know. Growing like a weed. It's like having three. <laughs> there ain't no three coming. <laughs> I told my wife we're never having sex again. <laughs> Ever. We're out. We're out. Completely done. All right. Well, so Big Co's here, so we're going to go start up course. Avi. Followed right, so followed by rebuild. Followed by some rebuild, sure, and and maybe a little one-one talk, but who knows? We, we we might not. We might only ever get to startups. You never know. Things things go awry quickly around here. Yeah. All right, so we're 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 mostly going to be talking super flex, tight end, premium startups. But you know, we, you could relate it to other things that you're doing. You know, if you if you got a if you got a super flex, maybe take off a round and a half for sure for non super flex. I did just do my first non super flex draft, and well, it if, was it was know, much different. No doubt. Well, I mean, you, the quarterbacks, if it's non super flex, they'll fall way down. Mm-hmm. After you get past, you know, the top eight or ten quarterbacks, they'll fall way, way down. Mm-hmm. And then you just adjust accordingly. If, if it's super flex or not super flex, the running backs and wide receivers order shouldn't change much. No, it doesn't. You know, no. that shouldn't that shouldn't be just your all. If you're doing a bunch of super flex, you're looking at it and and you know you're like, oh, that guy's you know, oh, he's a third round value. And then you start looking at non super flex, and you're like, oh, where where does it is it should, should he go in the fifth round? Right. Is that, is, that, is that about the same where, where I was taking them before? Uh, but no, you're right. All right. So <clears throat> what do you have for a little startup, tight end premium, super flex? What, what, what's your first order of business here talking about this? First order of business, uh, I've, you guys, I heard of the podcast you put out a couple weeks ago about startup, super flex. Of course, you know, quarterback's hot and heavy mm-hmm. all day long, right? The biggest thing is these days they dry up quick. They dry. It feels like to me they dry up quicker than they did a couple of years ago. It's pretty obvious. You got your the Rodgers and your Brady's that are moving along. Maybe Rodgers plays again. Maybe he doesn't. But there's you know um, there's guys of who we thought were going to be good a couple of years ago that are not so good. And you got Matt Stafford's of the world who's tumbling down the list. Who obviously is a good value this year. But there's just the Russell Wilsons that have tumbled down the list. You know. Yeah there's not so many quarterbacks so you sure you want a good one but once you know you either got to get a top five pick to get to feel herbert or better herbert burrow or jalen hurts you josh allen right. patrick mahomes you know throw your trevor lawrence in there wherever you'd like um you got to get that top five top six pick to get a quarterback that you feel like is your you know your top tier I'm going to hitch my wagons to this man. He's going to be my super flex quarterback. Right. Even after those guys, you start like you're kind of alluding to, like it's, you get the first six and then it's like, is Justin Fields going to, you know, you, how comfortable are you with Justin Fields moving forward? And it's like, you're, you almost got to just say, Hey, yeah, fuck it. We're, we're, we're taking him because we've seen the fantasy upside be great. Um, no, I mean, I, he's, is he, is he going to stick around at the top is really the question here. Right. I think. Just, just which, which, uh, when do you I'm have in the one here? where you're in one nine. Okay, so I'm you an, took I, Fields in that. I took Fields at one interest. nine in this in this draft, and but, so, but that so Lawrence kind of could float in the one in in the one through five, one through six range, and then you're set, you know is Fields the next one, and that's the one you feel comfortable with. In this mock, I took Fields. I would have no problem taking Deshaun Watson. Um, I, if you in in this in my case at one nine, I'm like if I'm, I'm taking Fields and I'm hoping Watson. Obviously, Lamar Jackson's still on the board. So if anybody's in the, in, sitting here listening to this already and screaming, being like, "What are you not? Why are you not talking Lamar Jackson yet?" So you got Lamar Jackson, Dak, Kyler Murray. So like, all right, I'm taking Justin Fields, and when I'm at nine, so you got six picks before I come back around. I'm like, I, I might be able to get me in a second one. You yeah. Know? But of course, that didn't happen. I like Justin Fields still. I, I'm sure. I'm, I just heard literally. I'm driving over here tonight. I heard the the 
four seconds of radio talk that I could before I could had to turn it off. But they were talking about just literally I turned the volume up. I was like, what am I listening to in the five minute ride on the way over here? And they were like, Justin Fields, Chicago Bears, the Bears should keep him and trade back off the one reload for him. And they were like, they should build up the defense and build up the offensive line and get some wide receivers. And I'm like, well, Jesus Christ, how much, <laughs> what do you, th- <laughs> you, do you think they're just going to put a whole new team around him? You yeah. know? So of course he's got, I, and that's, that was the whole problem. I said it last year coming in, he had the worst wide receivers in the league to, to, you know, to work with. Sure. Um, he, he literally had the, the worst talent group around him in the league to work with and his offensive line is no good. And then this year they just decided they're rebuilding and traded away their, their best two players on defense. Right. You know, so the, the, the bears are going in a direction obviously, but then fields, they just kind of take the reins off and say, Hey, we're not doing anything anyway. So you just do what you need to do. And he starts, you know, electrifying sure. the world with his 50 yard touchdown runs. And it just, I mean, literally for four weeks in a row, it was Justin Fields, 70 yard touchdown run, Justin Fields, 40 yard touchdown run. It was bad. And I think one game he did it twice. Yeah. I mean, and he was outrageous. On it the was ground. ridiculous. And so if somebody, um, if, if, uh, Daniel Jones can have a resurgence with the right coach, mm-hmm. If uh, Jalen Hurts can get his offense rebuilt around him like they did the year before and then grow uh, the the roster, <laughs> you might have the best roster in the league with the Eagles, compa- you know, tied with the Niners. And you might have the worst roster in the league with the Bears, you know. Right. So situation for Fields couldn't get much worse. Right. The talent. Uh, yeah, there's some things that – that he might need to clean up and there's some things he needs to work on. And there's, you know, as a straight pure pocket passer, he's got some work to do, but my man is a stud. Yeah. And, I mean, for sure. It, it, it's, it's really the thing that comes down to it is, is will he, will he stick up there and be, be one of these elite quarterbacks for, for the foreseeable future? I like, mean, for the fantasy, fu- I mean, why just, I he guess, was, I he guess it's a quarterback one this year and right. it can't get any worse. <laughs> right. All right. So, so that, that that's that's as that's good of an answer him. as you can get. Yeah. Well, so what would be the last? You obviously didn't take a quarterback. So Dak and Kyler going. Would you take Dak at two four? Like, what's the last quarterback that you'd take? Dak to at get two, a, Oh my god, I'd love to get that. a second quarterback. Yeah, Dak went at one twelve in this draft, and I took in the other mock that we're going to talk about. I took Dak at one twelve. Like to me, Dak is that last franchise cornerstone super flex quarterback people love to talk shit about Dak people love to talk shit about Dak I don't want I don't know if uh, I this is click. a Cowboys quarterback I mean I know I don't know if I can click on this right here and it tells me on my phone if I click on uh what QB like if he was QB six seven eight nine ten whatever uh if I'm on sleeper on my phone I just click on it and it tells me um but at if if Dak is your if Dak's your first quarter first pick in a super flex, no, it doesn't feel as good as taking Burrow. Sure, but he's only twenty nine. He's still. I mean, I, I guarantee you, uh, if points per game, what is he two behind Burrow? You know, so he's not Herbert. He's not Burrow. He's not Hurts. Now Hurt Hurts is playing a different game. Hurts is playing what we want Justin Fields to play. You know, Hertz is getting those rushing touchdowns. And Dak was doing a little bit of that earlier in his career, never to Hertz's level of rushing. But Dak was a much better pocket passer as a as a young quarterback than Hertz was. I I Dak is a nice consolation prize for the guy who gets a late pick in the draft. I'm I'm happy if I got Dak as my quarterback. Am I happier with Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen at the beginning of the draft? Of course I am. But don't sit in the back and pass on Dak and not have a quarterback. Looks like Dak's QB 15 points per game okay. on the year. Points per game. Okay, you missed it because he hurt his finger. Right. So points per game, you got the court, you got the game that he went out when he got hurt, and you got the first two games where he come back and he was slow. And Cooper Rush, everybody wanted Cooper Rush mm-hmm. to keep starting. So I'm just going to – that's my narrative saying he, <laughs> sure. he's probably – Got to spin it somewhere. He got, he's probably better than 15th points per game. Um, same team that literally traded away Mari Cooper for nothing and, and came into the league and his best – his favorite red zone uh, target got hurt week one. Dalton Schultz didn't come back mm-hmm. until if that got hot at the end of the year. And Dalton Schultz was a big part of that. 
And and so did CD Lamb come to life. Literally, like two weeks after I came on this podcast and said, "Buy CD Lamb, buy the dip." Um, <laughs> Boom! That was awesome. So, Watson, Watson, still you still feel comfortable with Watson? You absolutely okay? Yeah, I, Watson, and Lamar. Yeah, not as a uh, yes from a pure it's dynasty. Lamar scares me already because he's just a little bit. He's already he, you know the same thing that scares me is probably why the Ravens hadn't signed him. You know. Potentially, I, you know, like short term, if I was just saying, hey, if I've like 111 super flex Lamar, that's a great value. 111 yeah. super flex, you, you know, Lamar goes, then Dak goes, Bryce Young, and then Kyler Murray. You know, I'm not, we'll, we'll talk about the rookies in a minute, but, and, and Kyler's not my favorite. Just, I'm not huge on Kyler. I'm, I'm big on Kyler's fantasy production when he's healthy and all that stuff, but I'm just not, I'm just kind of, I'll let somebody else deal with that. If he's a last quarterback standing, of course I'll take him. Yeah, I'm fine with him but being my second. My second, sure. I, I'm I'm not going out of my way for. I him. mean, I, if I could, if if I didn't take one in the first for some reason and he was there, I'm not saying 100. percent So I, I like him in the second round. I think is a better way for me to say that. That's a great way to say it. The dude that just takes Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray, he's got quarterbacks. Yeah, plural. Right. It's hard to get a good one, and it's really hard to get two. Kyler Murray, if Kyler Murray is not the quarterback I want to have on my team, but if he's your second quarterback, you just you're you're ahead of the game. Yeah, you know, you can let him get he his body language and his lack of leadership is gonna, yeah, seems, is not going to bother half the people in your fantasy league. And when he comes back halfway through next year and his knee's fine, you could trade yeah. him away for a ton. Yeah, or I mean, or he's I mean, I don't really love him either, but I mean, he's a good, pretty good fantasy quarterback. Pretty, uh, he's a great fantasy you know, quarterback when he's running around and he's healthy. Yeah, Lamar Jackson is a huge value. It's just to me, it just the the. His playing style, you know, is just leads towards he doesn't have Jalen Hurts' body. He doesn't even have Jay, Justin Fields' body. He doesn't have Deshaun Watson's body. You mm-hmm. know? He he's just awesome and yeah. Skinny. Yeah, no, I'm I'm you know? I'm definitely still in just, on Lamar. I think that's good value as well. I think, I think it's gotta, great value. I <clears throat> I'd be I don't mind trying to trade away for Lamar for Lamar if you got a decent super flex team and, and you want to try to get another quarterback he's probably cheapest he's ever going to be if he comes back and as soon as he gets on the field and starts and does anything at all he's people are going to be excited about him and especially now that you maybe you got a new offense Roman's out of there right you might see it seems you know the same thing that happened with the 49ers that offense came in it was good it got stale yep this offense was good it got stale like yep. let's move on let's let Lamar do something else let's scheme it up just a little bit different yeah um Lamar's begging for it somebody posted something on Twitter about that and Lamar goes something like preach or what you talking about or something yeah. like hey you know hey why, how come Lamar Jackson doesn't have it and play in a pro style offense yet right you know um but as for you say the trade word, if I'm sitting here at one nine, you talking uh-huh. about startup strategy, and I'm and I'm comfortable with Fields, Watson, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott as a as a quarterback, and I know that I can trade back from one nine to one twelve and get an asset and still potentially bring a bring maybe I could bring my second rounder or my third rounder up, you know, you you're still getting one of those guys. Um, I'm happy with Fields, happy with Watson. I think Lamar think the way you said it is probably what you were saying is Lamar Jackson is a great buy low right now and uh, two I out of the so. first three weeks last year I think he was at 35 points yeah. 40 points you know? I, I mean again just another guy who hasn't been you know the the talent the, they're not not drafting trying to get pieces around him but it's like his running backs were hurt his, his what receivers did he have Bateman's out of there was was, was, got hurt, was right? hurt and and Hollywood's out of there Mark Andrews you know is is great but I mean you know, they drafted likely and, and Kohler and they're trying to put together some more tight ends, but there's really no, no wide receiver out there to, to, you to do anything. Out. You got to stretch it out. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, Mark Andrews and, and I think likely is an awesome compliment to Andrews, but you got to have, I mean, Bateman was doing work before he got hurt. Yeah. I, I maybe mean, I think he's a good player. They just need a net. They need two more real receivers. Uh, Demarcus Robinson's out there doing work leading your team Come like yeah. he needs to be your three or four for sure for sure he's a great four um what so what do you think about these rookies i, I i'm not so sure i'm taking either one of them in the second round for me I, I like both of i like and if anthony richardson gets first round draft capital which seems likely i mean he should be up in in the mix but there's no reason that those guys should be automatic second rounders and, and he shouldn't i mean you can be mad about anthony richardson if you want but i don't think he's as far away as people think yes he has some bad games but then there's there's not another 
equivalent of we're, we're talking about fantasy here. I think that's what people get things confused with is maybe he's missing, lacking a little fundamentals, but like he yeah. has all the raw abilities of the ball velocity and, and processing is, is pretty good. And he was, and that was an accuracy SEC. down a little bit. Right. He and and just in the SEC, it's not like he was playing in, in lesser competition or the, you know, and name, name Big, the last what, guy. Name the last guy. Florida maximized their fucking talent. Well, true. You know, true. just something's not right over there. Just as far as how they're using guys and schematically and getting the best out of them. And he should have been playing all last year, and he wasn't. They had uh, uh, Emery back there playing. Like, there's no reason Anthony Richardson shouldn't have been playing. I know he was a little banged up, but he needs to just be out there and get some reps. And and I I, I think he's probably going to get top fifteen draft capital potentially, and then. You know, yeah, I don't think there's any chance he's not getting drafted in the first round. There's there's too many quarterbacks. There's open spots in this league, and that's I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that in a, in so a minute. The but rookies in the second round, then, man, when I'm we probably out. I I'm out on the rookies in the second round of the startup this rookie year. Rookie quarterbacks, the rookie quarterbacks, say. because I, when I when we talk about the rebuild, the first team I'm gonna talk about is the one of the Patreon leagues where I've had a we started it about four years ago, and I came out of the draft trying to be quarterback heavy and I had horrible quarterbacks um Cam Newton played a part in that but the part the point of the story is is you don't want to miss on these picks there's so many awesome players when you're starting up and you're in the second round there's awesome players everywhere and sure you want quarterbacks as super flex but you when you get the the Kirk Cousins and the Daniel Jones and the like you said, Anthony Richardson goes into sixth round of this draft. There's no way you're getting an Anthony Richardson in a super flex that late after the NFL draft. Yeah. But you got your Jared Goffs and, and your Russell Wilson, who could be a huge, huge value yeah, I this love year. The, Russell. Um, the Staffords, the Mac Jones. Now, all none of those guys sound fun, and that's why they're fifth rounder later. But if you take a if you take a CJ Stroud, who could be amazing, but he could also not be good at all, and you pass up on an AJ Brown or a Kenneth Walker, or a Garrett Wilson, or a, a CD Lamb. St. Brown, you know, like, a, a, I'm not saying take a Monroe St. Brown in the second round, but you're Pat, yeah, you could take the, you know, switch them around, I, like, just for instance, in this draft, Bryce Young goes at 2-1. Mm-hmm. So, that, at that point, he's your first rookie, and you've literally taken the quarterback over Bijan. Right. You know, I, I you know, take it's a startup. It's different than the rookie draft, but I haven't seen one person really go and say, Hey, I'm taking Bryce Young over Bijan and Superflex. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm sure there are pl- plenty of people out there that just want to get a clickbait on that right after I say it. That's fine. They'll take it. But I'm definitely not taking Bryce Young over Bijan, even right. in the startup. No, I, I can't do it. Um, that J- Bryce Young. J. Mike wanted two QBs off the rip. And, and, and that's, and that's cool. I mean, Kate, Kyler Murray sitting right there, but Bijan, yeah. I mean, Bryce Young's not coming back from a, from a knee injury. The, the, I just can't, I can't, I'm not going those rookie quarterbacks that early. And it, because if, if they hit, that's great, but who knows? Yeah. And, and you could, there's so many, and obviously, you know, I'm talking Bijan's not played it down in the NFL, but he's the first running back. Well, the it's, just, it's the fact that these rookies all have a yeah, but with them, mm-hmm. you know, there's, all, there's just a little bit of something with each of them. None of them feel like home run smashes out of the park. Right. It's and not, then not a Trevor Lawrence. Typically, you know, and a guy like Anthony Richardson would already be up here and elevated, but we're so worried about the second half of his game, the athleticism, which, which puts fields and Trey Lance up, up in that second and third round, right. As they're a rookie mm-hmm. because there is athleticism and where they get drafted to and yada, yada, yada. But, um, you know, a, a, Anthony Richardson's we're worried about half of that. So we don't even, he's not even getting thrown up there right there. So, you know, I, I, you know, I just can't Bryce is a sub 190 pounds and right. You know, CG, not, and I think he's great. And, and I'm not saying that I'm out on him by any means, but he, um, he, he would be, he would be the smallest quarterback that ever worked. Yeah. That's, that's what I've, that's what I'm picking up right. on. And that, that's kind of why at two, one, it just feels like it's not just not the best move ever. That, sure. Uh, and there's too and much risk. Stroud just has a couple holes in his game too, but the the, be, the best game was his last game. And that's mm-hmm. what you like to see. Um, and if he looks like that and, and runs around and uses those legs, then, Hey, I could be in on Stroud. Sure. Um, and, and maybe two, nine makes sense at some point as we get closer to the season for me, maybe I settle into that a little more. Um, maybe he goes to the Texans and 
you trust DeMarco Murray and half that Niner staff that they lose every year that goes somewhere else. D'Amico Ryan's. D'Amico Ryan's, sorry. And, you know. I, I, dude, I think D'Amico Ryan's, I, somebody said he's going to run for president one day. <laughs> he, I, I think that's awesome. But I, if whatever one of these quarterbacks goes to the Texans, I'm staying away. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Mm. They, you could take Herbert and put him on the Texans, and I want nothing to do with him. They get, Texans got to prove it. The whole situation stinks. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's I'm, stinky. At least it, they got some decent draft picks, and yeah, they're gonna stink all those up. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's. I, I feel a little. Op- I don't feel terrible about it. I don't feel like they're that far away. I feel terrible about the Texans, and I love and I love uh, but Ryan Ryan Miko. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think he's. I, I liked I like McDaniel's going over there now. Obviously, a little more offensive guy, but I mean, same same deal. I think it's, it's just a, just a. I think he's gonna get have a Dan Campbell like effect, except I think he's probably already a little sharper of a coach than Dan Campbell is. So he's going to get those boys to play. Don't be talking about my Dan. Campbell. I love Dan Campbell. Better, I've been a big, better, I've been a big, hey. you guys need to stop with all this nonsense at, at press conferences. Cause he's saying some dumb shit. You better not be. I don't want anybody else popping out of the woodworks. <laughs> pretend like they're a lions fan. Okay. I've been over here rolling with the lions for when you want to say thick and thin, it's always thin, Bo. It ain't when it, for <laughs> good and bad. It's always bad. I've been a big supporter. It's of been them. thin and it's been bad. Yeah, forever. That's true. And now we're we're solid. We're so, solid. So you think? Yeah. So you think? No, we're solid. What, what kind of strategy you got for me here? What are you What are you thinking? What What do you take away from this? And what are your thoughts of how to approach a startup here? Let me go down straight on my team. Who mm-hmm. I pick instead of going and individually yeah. picking out these players and getting bogged down on that. Sure. I'll talk about my players and then we, I want to do the other mock cause I like that team a little bit better, but it's sure. the same general idea. You know, I took the fields at one nine, it wraps around Bijan, Bijan went two, three, my pick was two, four. I took Jonathan Taylor. It's a mock in January. Just having, just seeing what the team's going to look like. Right. Comes back around. I got, if just a third round reversal, Right, so that definitely took me off took me off guard. It's kind of nice though. Oh, it's cool, especially if you're at the back. It's really yeah. nice. So I got Tyreek Hill at three four, picked Tyreek Hill right in front of St. Brown. You know, this is pretty decent little age gap there. But I'm like, all right, let me see what I can do here. I got DeAndre Swift at four nine. Love that. Um, People are out on Swift right now, so that I like. I love that. That Smith, the Smith, the the Devonte Smith value or uh, the Devonte DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift Jesus value right now is is so good, so good, so good. Now, d- don't get me wrong. I heard the heard the podcast with you and Angelo, and Angelo saying Swift just hasn't he can't mm. stay healthy. Yeah, I don't. I, and, I wouldn't have time to push back on everything. Sure, so <laughs> sure. I I thought it was a great podcast, and I love when you get you two get together because y'all do really good work together. And I mean. If Swift can stay healthy, that's like what I was just talking about the Bryce Young 2-1. Like I'm not taking those rookie quarterbacks in the second round because there's too much risk. If Swift doesn't work out in the fourth round, I'm not saying I'm, there's plenty of good players I could have taken, but that Swift pick right there is a really fun pick for me. The and only it, way he doesn't work out is if he's not healthy. He's fucking good. Every and, time and, he touches uh, the ball, he looks right. awesome. Right. Uh, Every time he touches the ball, he looks awesome. I'm 4-9 I'm four, four, all day. All day. All day. So that's where I was looking at right there. In the fifth round, I took Jamison Wilson. Jamison Williams. Williams yeah. I jumped on the bandwagon there. Um, I, well, so there's a lot of people that say Jamison Williams stinks. I don't know how you could say he stinks. That's ridiculous. Well, just, you, just from just people who are citing numbers of, of you, what he did this last year and why, why didn't he get back on the field and play more if he's so good and just just dumb shit that nobody actually wants to put any thought into why he might actually have not really played all that much for the Lions down the stretch instead of just being like well he played x amount of snap share and he only had x he only had three targets like if he was great he'd be commanding targets if he was great he'd be helping the lines at the end of the season and it's like dude well uh, how how good was chris godwin to start this year coming off of his knee right. injury he goes out there and hurts his qual- hurts his hamstring the first time he has a bend over and make a play it's jamison williams first time and i don't know if i've ever said this my i think my lions played him smart Oh, he, for sure. They said know, in the beginning of the season this is what they were going to do. You got a first-round pick who just blew his knee out, and you got a team that is quote-unquote going nowhere, and all of a sudden we're going somewhere. Why? What do we need 
to go. You know what would have been the most Lions thing ever if they went out there and ran him down the field a million times and he fucking got hurt going into the offseason. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now he gets. Y'all are building something going forward. Yeah, you could have been in the playoff. Don't trade fucking Jameson's value in the offseason of building with golf to fuck or whoever you want to have back out there for a chance at one playoff game that you need other things to happen to even win to get in. And then you got to go win another game like you're building towards something, man. You're not winning the Super Bowl. You're not winning the Super Bowl. Just slow play that shit. You had your receivers were doing okay. I mean, Reynolds is good in, when he's got to come in and backup duty. Uh, Chark was good. Reynolds is good in backup duty. Right. Exactly. Kind of like uh, the the Ravens guy you were talking about, Robinson. Robinson. Like, yeah. Reynolds is a really good three and a half four. You know. So j- wild to me that that the J- that the Jamison Williams hate is out there because he didn't come back and just dominate. Like, dude, not only did like who's coming off an injury, who's coming off an injury and is a guy who is a, like, you drafted him to be that electric player. Right. Don't come back here fucking anything up like that. Yeah. You, you want all the juice from like, you saw it a couple times where he ran down the field and that was that well, will fuller crackhead speed where you were like, damn, I can't, nobody can catch him. The gap's getting bigger. Right. He's running away from everybody. Right. So don't get me wrong. I took Jamison. I love it. I'm, I just want no, to but pause saying, for a second. We can pause on that, but I can also say like, at five four, I'm not planting my flag because Pickens and Burks is on the fl- mm-hmm. on the you know on the board too. I just picked one of them, you know. I just took a yeah. pick there because I Tyreek Hill's 28, 29. But this pick right here, I didn't like. I, I got Taylor, I got Jonathan Taylor and DeAndre Swift. So we're talking about strategy. I have my team build here. I'm not. This is quote unquote best player available. Quote unquote. I got a plan, and I knew mm-hmm. that my next couple picks were going to be quarterbacks. And I didn't want another running back here because I didn't like anybody to be the value like Jamison Williams, Pickens and Burks. They're valuable. Does Burks have a quarterback and a team system around to get him ball next year? I don't know. But when he gets the ball thrown to him, he looks awesome. Uh, Pickens is awesome. I got Pickens everywhere from last year and I don't have any Williams. So I took Williams there in the fifth round. You got a lot of options to say, hey, I like these eight dudes right here. Let me either trade back a couple spots and or trade up a couple spots and get a couple of them, you know. Right. So I got Williams. I like that a lot. Uh, my next pick in, I take Anthony Richardson. Of course. Of course. Because I'm taking uh, an absolute thoroughbred quarterback in the sixth round because I haven't been wrong in like five years. Um, you know, first Lamar Jackson lover. Definitely the first Jalen Hurts lover. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just – I'm, why not? I'm running hot on grabbing athletic, ridiculously uh, uber talented quarterbacks, dude. And, and there isn't a a player that could be more impactful and have more value than Anthony Richardson at six nine. Right. This is where, like, you could get the Bryce Young and the C.J. Stroud pick right or wrong in the second round. <coughs> if you get them right, yeah, you got the both teams that took them had a quarterback already. So you obviously these teams that took those quarterbacks in the second round, rookie quarterbacks in the Superflex startup, were obviously pushing quarterbacks because that was both of their second picks as as quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. If I get Anthony Richardson right, I probably got the same exact thing you got in the second round. And or if I get Anthony Rich if Richardson is right, I got something more than what y'all you got. You got a first rounder. I got more. I got more. And then I've got my team played out now because these guys are chasing because they took quarterbacks in the second round. I got Jonathan Taylor, who's a stud. And then I got followed that up with Derek Carr and Geno Smith. Now, neither one of those looks fun Mm -hmm. at all. Geno Smith was a top 12 quarterback last year, and he didn't. didn't, There's nothing that he did that the Seahawks said to say, hey, he can't be our quarterback next year. Or somebody. Carr. He's going to be somebody's quarterback. Geno. Sure. G- you know? he's going to be the Seahawks quarterback <laughs> maybe week one for I mean, sure. maybe it's Anthony Richardson but maybe um then, then I'd be either fine. way like I guess what I'm, I'm just saying it's some if he's not he's going to be some there's a ton of quarterback needy teams Gino's going to be somebody's quarterback I'm I'm getting to that yeah quarterback needy teams that's, yeah <laughs> that's the part of this strategy that just comes around like and Derek Carr yeah this this year horrible at, 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 at the Raiders what happened last year? The year, you know, I'm, I'm this year, last year. The year before McDaniels got there, Carr was look. Carr played his best season in like four or five years. Mm-hmm. They had Waller. He was doing work. Um, Zay Jones was coming around. They were. They had um, uh, Renfro. Renfro was looking like a beast out there, and, and Carr was just doing his thing. 
Was he spectacular? No, but he was like, led them to the playoffs, right? Or almost. Right there at it. And then the backup. The, 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 the Rick Versace. Is right. The, uh, the, the interim coach gets fired. And then they bring in this whole new system. And obviously, you don't let a quarterback, you don't let Derek Carr, the face of the franchise, go mid three quarters away through the season if there isn't some horrible, like, headbutting going on with the quarterback, with the, with the coach and mm-hmm. the quarterback. Like, that just, what happened with that was like unprecedented. And so now Carr's going to go somewhere and the 7 4 car quarterback value is going to be fantastic as in Kirk cousins went two rounds ahead of this car. Yeah. You know, that's Kirk cousins went two rounds ahead. Russell Wilson's off the board at this point. When I take car and Russell Wilson just put together the worst looking season for a quarterback that was, has been good before ever. Nobody's ever looked that bad after looking as good as Russell has right ever without being like 50 years old. Now he's got Sean Payton. Now he's got Sean Talking Payton. Talking about how they're going to get him and Drew Brees doing their thing together in San Diego in the offseason. Nice. So I got a three I got three quarterbacks in a row right there. Bang bang bang. Are they are they the sexiest? No, but Richardson's sexy as he could be. Sure. And then Carr and, and Gino. To, to some people some people absolutely hate that pick, but fuck them. Yeah. But Carr and Carr and Gino not sexy at all. But literally, Carr and Gino could be. Yeah. I, all I need is one of those guys to be a good starter. I don't really his, like the Carr pick right there necessarily because it's a tough pill to swallow with just some of the firepower that is that is in there, like the Hollywood and the Godwin and the Watson. You know, I, I like all those guys, but really after that, I, I feel much better about it. But to your point, I like Carr just fine. I think he's he's definitely a middle of the road quarterback. He's a great QB two. He can have big games, dude. I think la- I think the year that year of the the where the la- last year twenty twenty one or whatever it was with Versace ending the season with him, like I think that was the first year in a while that he had had the same offensive coordinator and head coach like Gruden for two two or three seasons or whatever it was yeah, he's been going the into Raiders. there. He's just been through a carousel of offensive coordinators and head coaches through there where rarely did he have one that carried over. Sure. And, and I, so you're just not getting any consistency. And yeah, they came over there. It was a whole new system. Did they want him or not? I'm not really sure. Yeah, did they have weapons? Yeah, they had Devontae, but Waller was hurt. Renfro was hurt. Car can car can facilitate it. Just doesn't feel as great right this this minute, except for you know after a few other guys that would have been no doubt available. But I, so I don't love it, but I understand it right there. It's, well, it's fine. And, like, that's, and, and I told you before when we were, I told you before, like after the mock happened, I wanted I wanted Chris Godwin there, and you took him with the very next pick. We're on the mm-hmm. same page about some of that. Like in a real draft right there with money on the line in the seventh round, am I probably taking Chris Godwin? Yes. I want to see what my team looks like yeah. taking a handful of quarterbacks in the middle rounds and then building out from there. Um, you know, so I definitely I completely agree. Chris Godwin is an absolute stud and a steal in the seventh round. But I, I had, I wanted to just try It's a mock. Right. What am I doing here? Boom. Three quarterbacks in a row and see where I'm at. And then I, of course I end up with probably tight end premium. So I end up with Evan Ingram, Cortland Sutton in the 10th round. If you think Russell Wilson can be a good value and bounce back, Cortland Sutton in the 10th round is all day. Every t- I wanted him last year in the fifth and the sixth round because he got Russell Wilson, and obviously that exploded. And thankfully, the way it worked out, I didn't get – I only got Cortland Sutton in one uh, startup. So I, the price that I bought him in for this past year, you know, not looking great now, but thankfully that no, this happened. But this price looks good, 10-9. Jeez, this, this price looks great. And then um, – That's just solid – solid potential production there i know judy and and russell got on at the end of last season and, and sutton was you know a little bit of the odd man out in a lot of those games but I, there, sutton was was good in the beginning of the season there i uh, just a little nicked up missing missing a little bit with russell but 10-9 you can't go wrong with that at all i love i love that there's just that's a great veteran presence right in there that you can just grab and uh wr3 him all day long Right, exactly, and you know, like you said, if I would have gotten Godwin in the seventh round, he could be my he, he easily be the fourth re- wide receiver on your team by the tenth round or fifth, depending on the way it works out. A lot of times, I don't even have two running backs by this point. It comes with strategy. I I want a couple of running backs early, if if early ish. If I like the running backs 
Like, I don't mind taking Jonathan Taylor in the second round, Bijan, Brees Hall. Yep, agree. You know, uh, late. And, and I love 311 Kenneth Walker, but I'm going to pass on all those, you know, expensive running backs otherwise. Um, yeah. So, anyway, and I got a Tank Bigsby auto agree. draft here. Um, <laughs> Trey McBride, I, I, I like that value a lot in tight end premium. Me too. I don't mind. Uh, Kaseki and McBride all day long and late in tight end premium. Sure, sure. And I pretty sure Rasheed Rice would have been an auto pick. Um, no problem with that. Like him, no problem with that. Uh, but I, I, I could have easily taken Isaiah Likely in the 13th round. <laughs> That's my boy. But I 14th round Chase Claypool. Come on, man. Come on. Like you can say what you want about Claypool, the player, and you can say what what you want about Claypool getting on, you know, Brandon Marshall's podcast and saying that he's the fourth best receiver in the league. But the Bears gave up basically what the a, a last pick in the first round is people are saying they gave up like 132 or 2 1 or whatever they give up a high end pick yeah like a, a high end second round pick yeah they, they yeah the bears gave in gave up a very high second round pick value for claypool and they have mooney and nobody and, what, and whoever else they're going to bring in this year well the pool of free agent wide receivers is piss poor right it's like juju and chark are like the best ones so, but i'm you know rookie wise whatever right you know, they got it whatever they bring in like you still have it's like a, it's a coin toss with the rookie coming in with the rookie you just that don't too, know that too so the bears need everything right and you got justin fields that needs to have somebody to throw to and you didn't even get the chance to see claypool and fields do anything and even if you could have what was he going to do coming in halfway through the season to yeah. a team that stinks anyway with no offensive line and the defense started been traded away it's a team full of we just need to get out of here and not get hurt yeah. Like, you know, if that's your meant, like if the team's trading away, everybody, it's a team full of watch Justin Fields run around and maybe we can win if he scores enough. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 14th round chase Claypool might be the best value in the draft. Um, I, I definitely don't hate it. I mean, there's plenty of, there's, you know, chase uh, Chris Godwin at seven, five might be the best value in the draft, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Claypool at 14, nine, you're definitely, you just got a huge man. that's going to get plenty of targets because of they, he just got draft capital all over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you want to talk about draft capital. He just literally, if he just got drafted at 2 1 this year, yeah, he's not 20, 20 years old anymore, but he just got his draft capital reset. I mean, man, I mean, he's 24 years old. Give it to me. Um, do you want to hit the other mock? You got another little bit of piece of strategy here? Or yeah, because let thinking? me get the other. The, I, I, I want this big piece of quarterback strategy goes along with the the number in this mock so right. the other mock we'll, i'll do it a lot faster i took dak at 112 like we talked about i got Bijan right there bang bang so i got dak and Bijan. keep kyler murray was on the board all the other quarterbacks that we talked about previously were gone again same strategy that i knew is a, a month separated this mock but i knew that i've liked what happened last round and i wanted to try it again and you know obviously the draft spot changes and the actual players may change then I go three wide receivers in a row. And this is one thing I wanted to talk about. Like in one of these players, one of these teams just takes, I'm going to get all the old guys and I'm going to win now strategy. Mm -hmm. And he takes it to the extreme and goes overboard with it. As in he's the same guy has Tyreek Hill and there's nothing wrong with this Marco Mexico. It's just, it's a little bit too, you don't, I don't think you have to go that hard in the pain about it. Like, there's no, 310 Austin Eckler. That's fine, but I think he was 411 last time. Cooper Cup at 43. If he comes back and he plays two years at Cooper Cup level, that's fine. You got that. Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb at 510. Derrick Henry at 63. Derrick Henry in real money leagues was going later than that last year. Uh, you know, and I just think that Derrick Henry is a fantastic pick, but I think if you sit there and let some, I think he drops even lower. Uh, if you're the win now team, just say putting your stamp on win now you're taking those players and you're taking the value out of them because you're taking them when other people will take the rookies or the or the younger guys or the, all the 24 year old 25 year old receivers instead of those 27 28 year old running backs if you're the one taking them you should just continue to let them slide yeah seven seven two and and eight uh eight six i think in the other two mocks exactly so there's nothing wrong with being like i'm gonna win now you just don't have to force being the guy that picks all the oldest players and as in he continues in, then he gets geno smith as a second quarterback nothing wrong with that really then he gets waller and keenan allen and mike evans 
nothing wrong with that. But and Keenan Allen at nine ten, that could be fantastic. But he's what thirty one, and you've doubled Mike Evans at uh, in the tenth round. He's twenty nine. He could play two more years, but he's just lost his quarterback. You know, just that's a hammer and home of the I'm gonna win now. Yeah. So it's funny because I got Chris Godwin here on the turn at five one, and he went in the seventh round last mm-hmm. in the earlier mock. So I was going out. I wanted to get. I was taking my guy here because I was on the turn, and I was going to be twenty four picks before it came back. And I knew that when it came back, I was taking two quarterbacks in a row. So I started Dak Bijan. I got St. Brown, Devontae Adams on that turn. And oh no, it was the third round was Versal. So I got Dak and Bijan back to back. And then it goes down to the end of the second round. And it starts back over with me at 3 1. So I got St. Brown and then it goes out and it comes back and I get Devontae Adams and Chris Godwin back yeah. to back. So to me, like, do you see how much win now is in that stack and only got one old wide receiver? Yeah, for sure. Right? You see, you follow that. Like, St. Brown, that's a win now pick. He just happens to be 23 years old. I'm winning now with a St. Brown just as much as you're winning with somebody else. Devonte Adams, he's my old wide receiver, but he's absolute beast, and I'm taking a chance on him in the fourth round. Chris Godwin, 26, 27, you know, 26 years old, stud. So I got three win now receivers. Chris Godwin in his prime at 26. St. Brown's just getting started at 23. I got a nice little mix, and I got the championship winner in Devonte Adams if it works mm-hmm. right. And then when it comes back around, I got two quarterbacks in a row: Daniel Jones, Jerez Golf. Same thing I was talking about earlier. Not sexy. Derek, Daniel Jones was left for dead before the new quarter coach yeah. got there. What's his name? Dayball. Dayball shows up. Daniel Jones is good again. Love that. What if Anthony Richardson goes to the Giants? Dude, come on. Come on. And golf. I, golf, I mean. Bo, I left golf for dead. We had him on a Superflex team together a year in two years ago. I made us train him. I was like, bro, we got to get rid of this guy before he's worth nothing. And he was literally on his way to being worth nothing. He got traded away from the Rams and to the Lions, which in the Lions, to the Lions credit, they said in the Matthew Stafford trade, we want a quarterback back. That is, we want golf back. That's what they wanted it. They looked for a team to make that trade with to get a quarterback that would actually not be horrible because they didn't want to purely bear it down, tear it down to the studs, rebuild. Right. And I was like, what a horse shit is that? You got Jared Goff. Dude looked good this year. No, yeah, dude, look good. I mean, this year. he's the offensive line's great. He's, he, he should have time most, most, most days, mm-hmm. uh, most dropbacks, and and the players around him are good. St. Brown's good. I mean, now they got Jamison Williams going to be in the flow of things this year, getting right, uh, right. And then you get a whole nother class. And Swift, and, and you got extra draft picks because you traded away right. Stafford and got all those ones. All did, right, and you traded away Hawk, <clears throat> and you traded away Hawk. So I, and then I followed. So I got. So now I got Dak. Daniel Jones and Jared Goff. Same thing I said about the last mock when I said I got uh, Derek Carr and Geno Smith. I need one of them to be a starter for that. Those two picks to tie up seventh and eighth round capital in quarterbacks. All I need is for Geno Smith to do what he did again, and that's value for both of those picks. And if Derek Carr is any good, look at me, right? Daniel Jones, if Daniel Jones just – he was a QB 8, 9, 10 because he had seven rushing touchdowns this year. If Daniel Jones does what he did again, if he's like a top 12 quarterback, then that's awesome. And if Jared Goff does what he's did again, then that's awesome. And only need really one of them to do that to, for, to pay off because in Superflex are so valuable. I can, if, if, if golf or Jones comes out, especially Jones, cause he's a little bit younger and he gets some of those rushing touchdowns. If Jones can take it to another level, that six twelve purchase of Jones looks awesome. There's a little risk here. QB there. nine for Jones. There you go. And that's first year in that system. And they had literally wide receivers off the streets in right. Saquon. <laughs> yeah. They had a, they started a rookie tight end in week one. They had Saquon being a beast. First half of the season, he was the best running back, and then he tailed off. And then he, they had no wide receivers to speak Picked of. Picked up Isaiah Hodges off the street in the middle of the season and fucking turned him into a superstar. Just signed him, too. <laughs> Just signed him. Kept him away from being able to be grabbed by other teams. So – those are my that's my that's my little strategy right there i got a win now wide receiver group when i'm only giving it out giving it away to one old wide receiver i got Bijan, youngest running back in the league he ain't even took a snap yet but he's you know obviously the best running back to ever play the game ever um and then i take it then i got evan ingram who is my late round tight end premium guy right now and then my next pick nine one mac jones love it bo Mac Jones, Mac Jones is 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 a target in every single one of these 
think or I like to just see where he's going. If we were actually playing, he would for sure be on my team in a lot of these. Yeah. I love that nine, 10 round Mac Jones, man. It yep. just, the value is so good on that. And I know people are just so quick to judge everything and throw everything away and everything's mid these days. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mac Jones is mid, but I'll take fucking mid Mac Jones in the fucking ninth round. And I, I think Mac Jones is just fine. Right. Like, you, who, who was your coordinator this year? Who are you throwing to? Like, Nobody. Your coordinator was a guy who's never called offense, really. He's a defensive guy. And and you're, you're, the guys around you, you had Thornton, who was a rookie. I like Jacoby Myers. He's good. I like, like him. He's good. He, he's he's going to get a nice little contract and be you Hunter know, Henry. A, a decent. Hunter Henry. That's, you know, okay. probably your next best player. Yeah. And then you have Thornton and Bourne and who? Aguilar and. Who? Right. Who? Devontae Parker. Devontae, Devontae Parker was Parker? actually half decent yeah. for stretches this year. You almost, yeah, I think you just named a better wide receiver group than the Bears. Yeah, I mean, but, barely. I mean, we're talking about 31 and 32 here. Barely. Right. I mean, it just and Giants, you know. Uh, you oh, know, yeah. It's just, yeah. there was nothing there. You bring in Bill O'Brien. I think that's just huge for Mac Jones. You cannot like Bill O'Brien as a head coach for the Texans, but he can coordinate some offenses. Sure. Um, and he's been there once. They brought him back in. I think this is going to be, I think Mac Jones is going to have a nice year this year. You know why it's huge? Because he's, uh, and him, and, like, O'Brien and, and Belichick are boys. Right. They've done this song and dance a couple times. Right. They already know the steps. They already know the dance. Right. They know what music they're going to play. This is what we're going to do. They know with a set list. They know what order the songs. Yeah. They basically walk. They, they, it's not even like, hey, man, hope this works. Right. I'm going to take a chance on you, new offensive coordinator. I'm going to give you a shot. I'm going to promote you from somewhere. They've already done it. They're they, going to get they, Mac Jones right back to middle of the pack quarterback. That's all you need. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say he's going to be great. I'm just saying, like, just stop throwing him away. He's fine. Like, he had a nice stretch in his rookie season where he was pretty good with McDaniels. McDaniels leaves. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. And he gets a defensive coordinator as his fucking <laughs> play offensive caller. Coordinator. Yeah. yeah. Imagine yeah. that. Imagine he's not great. He was visibly frustrated with what was going on out on that field. Yeah. A reasonable, at least start, stretch of the, like, he's a fiery guy. He wants to fucking win. He has that little bit of thing, that and little it, bit of, you know, moxie that, that you want out of your quarterback. And I, I, he's got it. I think he, there was a good enough stretch in the rookie season when things were how they should operate in the NFL. Uh, when, and I like how you just said that he's a fiery guy. He's got that little bit of moxie that you need out of your quarterback to want to go win. He wants to win. Like there's a lot of those NFL films mic'd up there. The, the guy with the big cone thing picks up the st you know picks yeah. up the audio as they're walking off the field tons of big f bombs from mac jones walking off the field this year yeah and it wasn't because of something because he crushed it right yeah no so that's mac jones my fourth quarterback through nine rounds nine one and daniel jones jared goff as i said Dak prescott my little stable leader are any of them superstars no but in superflex i got four of them and I, I'm not. It's not gonna work out work out like that every single time. But I got Bijan, three stud receivers. Now I got four quarterbacks. I can do pretty much. I got now. I got options. Yeah. Now I got options. And here's the thing about that. When you say, "Well, you know, fucking, I don't, you don't have that many options because nobody wants those guys." Here's the thing. I take Mac Jones at nine one. When I take that pick, there's 26 quarterbacks off the board already. Four of them are rookies. Two of them are Lance, Trey Lance, and Tua. Mm -hmm. So, and there's 32 spots. And in a 24, in a, in a super flex league, almost every week there's going to be 24 quarterbacks in the, in the starting lineups. And yet you could have an absolute studded out team, but almost every time you're going to want to have a quarterback in your super flex. But in a bad game for a quarterback at like 14, 15, 16 fantasy points, yeah, sometimes they have four points because shit happens. Right. But most of the time, your fantasy, your quarterbacks are going to average way more than your wide receiver three or four. And don't come at me having five running backs that are actually startable worthy because that's not going to happen by the time you get to week six. You know, two of them's going to be hurt. Yeah. You're going to want to have quarterback in your super flex. At 9 1, 26 quarterbacks gone. Four of them are rookies. Two of them are Lance and Tua. And there still needs to be six more as starters. <laughs> right. Right. So you talk about needy quarterback lead. There's still six open spots for those, for, for quarterbacks to be started every week on Sundays to work in our pretend game that we play. And so at a minimum, we got 18. We feel good about. 
Yeah. Because four rookies and Lance and Tua. Tua's, I feel, fa- dude, if you could tell me that Tua's going to shake that last. Put him in the second round. Bo, all day long. All day long. Put him, I, I, I feel so comfortable with Tua. I'll take, I'll take Tua at 2-1. Before you, instead of you taking that that rookie C.J. Stroud at uh, Bryce BJ, Young at two yeah. one, I'll take two at two one all day long if those cobwebs go away. I agree, but there's no chance I'm taking two in a startup <laughs> with that problem going on. No, I, somebody else's problem. Right. If he hits fantastic, you're not going to beat me. With, now three eleven here, maybe I could take no, Tua. Nope. Maybe nope. I would start considering Absolutely it, but I, I'm I'm I can't do it. I don't put I'm, a whole lot of guys on do not draft list, but Tua, I'm, I'm Tua, pretty. I, Bo, I couldn't. There's not. I'll come back and buy Tua from you because I've. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'll see you later. Yeah. If, if Tua if Tua comes back and plays again and he plays at a high level, then you got me. Because nobody likes Tua. So you, exactly. You know. He's not. That's fine. He's not. It's always like going to be a problem. Yeah. Even if, if he could be he could be balling out through nine weeks next year, you can be like, wait till that get that next concussion though. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, dude, I don't I don't want to make a joke about it. Like, I there's not many players that I'll pull pull for harder than Tua next year, and but I'm not drafting him in the dynasty startup. Yeah, if he was an eighth round, I'll take him, but he's not gonna make it that right, far. Right. And it's like you know, well, he because he never take him. I'm not taking him. Yeah, because somebody else will. I'm not taking Tua with all the. Dude, I'll take any of those players <laughs> over to him because of its problem. The, the, that head, that noggin is a serious. He just got cleared. Yeah, well, I mean, we. I got. I need. To, I need a year. I need. To, I need to see a concussion free year. I didn't even to take a year off. <laughs> just sit, take the headset, and stand on the sidelines for a year. Come back next year. Yeah. Seriously, dude, this is a big, big issue for Tua, and I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. So anyway, again, we need. We got. We need. We need quarterbacks. The league needs quarterbacks. Right. Superflex teams need quarterbacks. So that's why that Mac Jones at nine one is just a ridiculous pick. And it's yeah, like you go down the list after that. Purdy, Brock Purdy at ten, home run cut. I'm taking all the Brock Purdy in the tenth round. There's no chance I'm not taking no Brock injury Purdy. to Brock Purdy. Obviously, this happened before you know. the injury, but still, even with the injury, that I'll take Brock Purdy in the tenth round, injury or no injury. I mean, unless they say, "Hey, his arm's never, he's not going to be a throw to football." Seems fine though. Yeah, they're expecting him back for OTAs or whatever. Maybe, yeah, yeah probably maybe six not, months, but not OTAs. Was um, training uh, camp. training camp. The point being, Jordan Love probably going to be a starter here shortly. Is he going to be any good? I don't know. Like, like you said, everything about like Mac Jones is is good. Right. Is he, is can he be great one day? I don't know. Is he great now? No, but he's good. I think and he's yeah. Agreed. Remember that whole Andy Dalton or better thing I was preaching to a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Andy Dalton was good enough to last for a while, but that didn't go. Like Mac Jones is going to be the quarterback for the Patriots for the next couple years. It and seems so. It seems so. And unless Bill you know falls out and well, he's, he's going to be a quarterback somewhere. Yeah, he's in enough as a rookie to earn the stripes to be I think a he's going to be good again this year so yeah so that that's kind of where um of course I auto drafted the end but I got uh, I got Mac Jones at 9-1 and just the value when Mac Jones is is resurging you know yeah is in the middle of his resurgence there's not a player taken after him in this draft that's going to be more valuable than Mac Jones maybe Purdy's the starter for the Niners um right. you know maybe one of these rookie maybe you know one of these running backs becomes the best thing ever but i don't know which one it is you know the safe pick the best pick is mike jones there um and then i 10th round aj Dillon all day there's my Cortland sutton again i ain't lying mm-hmm. every time every time and then 12 12 elijah mitchell right. all he does is be awesome when he's on the field and you know you got your um christian mccaffrey who couldn't be in a better offense for him all you know what happens if he gets hurt right 12 12 elijah mitchell because i got Bijan at 2-1 and i don't have another running back all right but then i got 12 12 mitchell and he's gonna sit on my run on my on my list and i took jamal williams and that was really just like a a 13th round it's a mock and i'm gonna show y'all boys because there's people shaking their head i don't have any running backs left first you oh know, that's to fine go. so i'm like all right watch this i'll put jamal williams at, like the best rb2 to put on your team ever in the thir- 13th round now is should i have taken i would have if i really was we had money on that and it mattered more than just you know one year hey what was i gonna do about my rb2 even though i did have ag dylan already and elijah mitchell was a backup 
I'd probably take Elijah Moore um, in the 13th round. I'd probably take Elijah Moore and put him on my team and just say what happened last year happened last year. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, but even still, I, I'm obviously behind that Jamal Williams pick. Well, we're not, we're not, like, we didn't finish the draft. We only did 14 rounds for the sake of everybody's time. No doubt, we're doing these, so no that, you know. But the idea of what you're doing of of stabbing at these running backs late now, maybe maybe you have one green box up in there instead of one of those quarterbacks potentially. But I mean, I, I feel it's a mock draft. Like we're coming in here, we're seeing, especially this part in the season. We're feeling out where things go. Poking and bottom, the bottom drops out of some things, and you got to reassess a little bit. It's a mock, and it's like you know, you look at a mock and you go, "Oh, look at this guy's team right here!" Like, "Oh, what what a what a bad team!" Or he doesn't even have this, or he doesn't even have that. It's like, well, there's almost no scenario where any team that I draft that I go in and and I'm gonna just be like, "All right, this is my roster. Right. This is what I'm doing." Like, I'm 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 picking up value and being like, "Hey, I I can be liquid if I get this and this and this. I can be pretty liquid and and you know move." move throughout so you know the idea of just grabbing uh, you know maybe instead of jamal williams maybe you take a you know maybe you take maybe maybe tajay spears gets second round draft capital right. and, and you throw you know we don't know but right you can come down here and you can s- snag up a couple of running backs and be good enough and then be able to trade something you know one of these quarterbacks for a running back plus if you want or whatever you got to do but I'm basically I feel the same way as you as the way to start this is like hopefully a quarterback not going to press it. I'll take Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase in the first round. Fine with that. Um, I'll take Justin Jefferson all day long. But I'm I'm only you said it a, while, a little while ago. I'm only taking Brees, Bijan and probably JT in that second. And then I'm probably not drafting a running back in the third round. I may I would maybe draft Kenneth Walker in the third round. I'd take Walker in the right spot. He went three four here and the other one he went three eleven and I'm taking them all day. If I if I don't get one of those guys, I'm I'm just gonna wait. Like I love the fourth round of running backs right now. Late fourth round. Uh, DeAndre Swift. Four, DeAndre nine. Swift, Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs. Come on. Yeah. Let me get one of those guys. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. That's my first running back. Right. Um Oh, no doubt. You know, so it's it's top four, and then let, let some guys fall off, and then I'm I'm kind of fourth, fifth round. I'll, I'll go back in on running backs. I like the value of Stevenson, and I like Pollard a little later, and and Pierce a little later, and Dobbins mixed in there, and you know you can you can get a little running back production. And man, I just I feel like quarterback and running back right now are very easily tradable for, trade for positions like. Well, There's, not those top, top quarterbacks. No, no, of course, not the top, top of any guys. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Bijan, Brees, the four guys that I named, no, those guys are hard to trade for, even though they're running backs. But, like, I'm just saying that mid-tier of guys that you need to, like, I don't, I don't, need, hopefully I don't need a great guy. I got, I just need, yeah, I need somebody to be able to plug in my lineup that's just in that second tier. Well, like you said, I'm not going, this is not week one for my lineup here, but if I did... I got Chris Godwin and Devontae Adams and my and and I'm on Versace Brown. So I already got I got one flex full. I got right. two wide receivers and one flex. Let's just imagine I got one more flex and then the super flex. Right. So I got four quarterbacks. So I, week one, I'm gonna probably run out Daniel Jones and Dak Prescott. Sure. Or golf, depending on the matchups. Like my boy golf plays in a dome now. So <laughs> you know, I got I got those matchups to go. I got Evan Ingram plugged in in my tight end spot. And I got AJ Dillon. Who I'm gonna play? Yeah, week one I'm gonna run out there, and my RB two is not gonna look great, and my quarterback two is not gonna look great. But when you look on my hey, bench, quarterback two is gonna look just fine. That's what I'm saying. I like, know, I'm, but it's just I, who, no doubt. You might have a better one, maybe. I got I got Deshaun and Kyler. I'm probably I'm not even running him out there. That this draft just happened to fade go that way, so that's what I did. There ain't another guy in here who's got who, who's got you worried at their second quarterback position. You know, true. And then I'm, you're not even gonna get Kyler for probably at least good Kyler for probably a portion of the season. I mean, good point. You got, but but when you do, when you do get good Kyler, you got him. So you got Watson and Kyler. But you're right. So the next guy, the ju- Justin Fields guy, has Anthony Richardson. Basically, to your point earlier, man, there is none. There, there is, is no quarterbacks. You can get these middle of the road quarterbacks because people hate them anyway. They're just taking them because they have to. So you can go either way. You can sell somebody a quarterback and get somebody decent, or you can buy one of these quarterbacks for I think a reasonable price. Nobody likes Kirk Cousins. Nobody likes fucking Russell Wilson or Carr anymore. Daniel you know, Jones, Jared Kenny Goff. Pickett's already the worst pick ever picked in the first round like sure. I, I think kenny pick is just fine dude i heard somebody on the radio the day that gets i mean i can't like it's literally 30 seconds and i have to turn it off but this somebody was on the radio which means they're getting paid to do this and they're talking about they didn't see nothing out of kenny pickett this year and the and the raiders need i mean the steelers, and the steelers need to be going after car 
And don't get me wrong. If the Steelers could come up with car cheap, that's fine. Get car for cheap. But don't say you didn't see nothing out of picket. Yeah. Like, that, what do you do? That means you didn't watch. Or, yeah. you, or if you did, you don't know what you're looking for. You're just, or you're just you're just mad at the your take locked on him, if, and you're like he stinks on. He's a rookie, Bo. If if you did bad offensive line. If you didn't see anything out of picket, then did you not know that the the Raiders the Steelers had the worst offensive line, like one of their worst offensive lines? Like Big Ben was throwing it faster than he ever had in his career the year before. Like snap to throw, bang, snap to throw. That's Deontay Johnson. That's why he had 388 targets in one year. Yeah, because he had to get the ball out as fast, to get the ball out as fast as possible. My offensive line sucks. Pouncey been gone. You know, the Castro, the Castro gone. Yeah, you know, like those the all pro guys that you had for a generation, for a whole decade, they gone. So you're trying to rebuild, and you got small hands Kenny Pickett out there who literally drug your ass down the field a couple times in the fourth quarter. They just don't like that he didn't throw a bunch of touchdowns and he wasn't awesome right off. Like, How um, could he be with that with that offensive line? He has a clutch gene, Bo. He's, he's got a clutch he's, gene. He's got, that, he's got that little bit of something. I, I don't... I'm not saying he's going to be great either, but like as far as a fantasy quarterback, and I thought he showed, I liked what I saw from Pickett this year. He I fucking, did too. He fought his ass off. That's what I'm saying. He made some bad plays, but he made some great plays. If you think the Steelers are sitting around thinking they don't have a quarterback, you got another thing coming. <laughs> I, I think I agree. I guarantee you, all, everybody in that locker room sitting around going, we don't have to have a we We got a quarterback. Yeah. Could you replace him? Could, would Aaron Rodgers want to come over here for a year? Maybe you want to put out, put up with that drama. Maybe you don't. But could you get a better quarterback than Pickett? Yeah. Could you be in a lot worse shape? Yes. Sure. Or half the teams in the league in worse shape? Yes. Yeah. Long term? Yes. Yeah, I like I, I I fucks with Kenny. I don't I don't get the Kenny Pickett hate. I get like I would because the, the stats don't weren't good. The, the, all so the all the what? metrics that measure things aren't aren't great, but it's just like man, I I I saw what I needed to see out of him. Let's go into year two and see what's up. No doubt, and I mean he didn't play for the first handful of games, and, and then he got he, concussed. He and he comes in like you've spent you spent the whole off season give it saying Trubisky was your starter and Pickett was your rest guy. He we're gonna rest him and we're gonna build him up in practice and he's gonna be he's a B got team. Some good legs for you too. He was on the B team in practice. like he didn't yeah. even get to practice and then literally. Halftime one game, they're like, you're in, Bo. And, you you know. Only threw seven touchdowns. He, he still got, where's his fantasy numbers? I can't, I mean, it, it wasn't terrible. No, he's got the legs are good enough. I mean, he, he started picking it up a little bit at the end of the season. Uh, there was a couple of games that were a whole lot of fun to watch with Kenny Pickett coming in the fourth quarter. That's what I'm saying. At the end of the, the season. I'm, uh, that's all you, and your rookie quarterback is making your team Break, you're fighting in the fourth quarter? Yeah. Sure. All, All right. right. Well, let's let's pivot off of this. Okay. Let's hit a little rebuild. That was good stuff right there. I, I enjoyed that. Great stuff. Great stuff.